we've had the allotment for either 11 or 12 years, although Monica thinks it's 10. <laughs> something like that, yeah, yeah, something like that. I'd say 11. Yeah. A while. <laughs> You know, some people are really struggling with it, and so uh, you take a lot of that on, and then coming down here and forgetting about what, well, forgetting about it. You know what I mean? Losing it, and losing yourself in the allotment, and um, is really, for me, really important. Yeah. I've always been outside, and I've always been outside. It's just a love that I have, and uh, when I moved back up north. I wanted to um, live in Broadbottom because of the trees. I, there's just something about being around trees. It's, it's the sound, they clean the air, you know, they change colour. I think I'd have suffered with depression if I hadn't have lived somewhere with so much countryside. And I knew I needed to live somewhere where there was countryside. I've had the plot probably for about 20 years now. And we were the first women on the allotments, it was all retired men. Um, so we did get a kind of um, a slightly interesting reception. I think it was like that with other people on the plot. There were a lot of people that had had allotments for decades. Mm. Whereas now what's changed is the allotments have become a bit smaller and lots of different people have got smaller plots mm. here. Um, yeah, so we had big boots to fill with we Vera did. and Dennis, mm. who were very, very good gardeners. That's why in the evenings, if I say to the guys, I'm just popping down the allotment. Not for anything in particular, just for half an hour's potter. Just clears my head after a day at work of hearing lots of sad stories. Um, it's just nice to come and forget about all of that and grow things. I love digging. There's something really lovely about digging and pulling weeds out. It's, it's so therapeutic. It's a little sanctuary. It's um, somewhere to come for some peace and quiet, or equally company if there are other people around. I'm not naturally green fingered. It's so satisfying just to be able to grow something um, from seed, and it doesn't always work out. But um, and to take it home and eat it, and to know that it's what's gone into it, and that it's fresh. It's just very, very satisfying. We've got, um, so we've got potatoes, leeks, onions, we've got some very good lettuces at the moment, mons too. Um, I quite like growing different sorts of squashes, so there's courgettes but there's winter squash and things like that as well. I would say just generally, not just during lockdown, that it's, it's really good for my well-being. I love it. I love being able to pot, come down here and have a little potter. And, yeah, and grow things and be outdoors and chat to people. The people walking along there, they're so friendly, they always have a little chat over the wall. Uh, anybody who's down here is very happy to chat and share and it's, it's lovely. And of course we were allowed to during lockdown. That was, it was on the list of things you could do, so down the allotment. Um, no, it's, it's just very rewarding, very therapeutic, I suppose. I'm just so interested by plants they just really intrigue me um, but flowers are flowers are my favorite um, and I've just finished my garden at home so now I needed another project and so that's why this has been great previously when we first came here each of the men had one big plot like this and some of them had two and there were guys who probably had worked all the work in life and this was like going to work, so they would come here every day, pretty much all day. Um, whereas now, I think because the plots are split into two and sometimes into three, there are more people. And yeah, more women for us. I don't know why, why that should be. Um... And the nice thing about the allotment as well is I think nobody really buys anything very new. 
it's all recycled and I'm forever scavenging bits of wood and bits of um, stone for my paths and bricks and I carried a brick for miles the other day. It was very, but a brick is very heavy when you carry it for a long period of time just because it was beside the road and I needed another brick. So it's all scavenged basically, um, which is nice. Speaking mm. for myself, I think it gives me space to let my mind be. But this year with lockdown, of course, we've been down here a lot more. That's good. Yeah. But I, I'm the same with you, the, the, the mental sort of side of things, just coming down. I mean, I love picking fruit. You know, you, you, you've got to pick fruit. It takes time, but there's something I love about that. You've grown something, you're harvesting it, and it takes a while. But you find it doesn't, time just disappears. Mm. You know, it's, it's quite... Yeah, it's quite nice having a repetitive task. Yeah, you can spend hours down here and not even realise. Um, um, and it's just a bit of fun for me, really. You know, I'm not planning to feed to feed myself for six months. I'm just experimenting with things. I mean, I mean, I put corn in, sweet corn in, because there is nothing like sweet corn picked off the cob and put into a pan of boiling water, because if I would never buy it fresh at a supermarket because the minute you pick it, the sugars turn to um, starch, so you lose that sweetness. Yeah, and it's the same with spudge. You don't get the taste of a homegrown spud that you would in a supermarket, and, that, and that's part of the fun of it for me. When it works well, cauliflowers. That's that's. The, I'm always really proud. I've got one now, but it's only about that big. I think there was also that sort of thing, even though this is something we've, we've always done and, and, and we like the seasons, I think there was that food security thing, you know, with everybody panicking going to supermarkets. <laughs> Not that we were particularly like that, but there was a comfort in going, well, we grow our own food. So we, we perhaps made a little bit more effort than we would, so, 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 because that, that question over mm. where are you going to get fresh produce, where, where is this leading, I, th I think that, that question became quite sort of high up the agenda so yeah. I, th I think it became it took a different status than it has in other years you know it's sort of like oh we want to make sure we do all right this year <laughs> yeah. 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 carrots are better off grown in a pot because there's a thing called the carrot fly and you're gonna laugh at this now the carrot fly grows just that high above the ground and the minute you thin your carrots out he can smell it from miles around and he will come in and lay his eggs now, if you grow him in a pot this big, he can't fly. He just bang into the pot. Um, some years it felt like it was taking over, but you felt guilty, and that's no way to feel. You know, if it starts to bully you, then you're not enjoying it as much. Um, so yeah, the, the twenty-minute gardener approach. Yeah. Where you, you choose a little job that you're going to do, and you get that done. And it's uh, it's very achievable then. We that, yeah, I was going to say we tend to divide jobs as well. <laughs> Pen's very good at digging. She points, I dig. Mm. <laughs> and it's very important, I think, to plan a garden because people think gardening's easy. And I always say, if you went out and did your kitchen up, you wouldn't buy one cupboard one week and another cupboard six months later. You would plan your kitchen. And people don't seem to, to plan the gardens, and I find that quite strange. A lot of people get a lot of pleasure, and a lot of people get a lot of pleasure walking past these allotments as well, which is nice. And again, you know, people stop and have a chat, and it, it's, it's really, really lovely. It's a lovely spot. Mm. Penny and Monica are uh, the social committee because they're the ones that would say, shall we have a social or it's Penny's birthday, you know, can we get together for a drink or something? It's not always stuff that you can just get out of the books because it, it's local and it's specific. Yes, or what's the ground like? Yeah. Or don't grow carrots because that badger comes and, and digs them up and then digs a hole as a latrine and does a big poo, um, <laughs> which has just happened to Peter. He's had, a, he's had an incident. He was losing his carrots and then one day he came down and it had dug a latrine. <laughs> Left him a gift. <laughs> so 
of uh, onions. Probably this is my best crop ever. Uh, they've never got very big before. Carrots, well, very poor show, obviously, because the badger ate them all. I've just really enjoyed it. And it's just kept me so busy. You know, I kind of think, I'm freaking out, don't want to go back to work. <laughs>